Hey guys, what's up? So, uh, doing a quick little video here for you. Um, filming it on my phone because my GoPro is dead. Um, this video is to help out anybody with a Peterbilt. Mainly a 3D6, like mine. Um, mine's a 2010. It should help out any video really with a Peterbilt with this cast styling. Your 379s, your 3D9s. Um, 36s, the 3... 88, I think. I can't remember the other number. 3D4. One of there's with the cab styling of a 3D6. You know this, the old school. You know 379 stuff like that. Um, what this is is if you're having a problem with your clutch or your Jake brake just not working, kicking off on and on. Um, you're driving down the road with your clutch set, it kicks off. Just randomly. You don't even hit the clutch or the brake. It just kicks off. You hit the clutch. It kicks back on. You know, blah, blah, blah. What it is, is two things. It's either going to be your clutch return spring. Or your clutch control center. Both are very easy to replace. The clutch spring is about 20 bucks from uh, Peterbilt. I bought both of them at Peterbilt. Um... I would do your return spring first, and then I would do the clutch sensor second, because the clutch sensor, depending on where you go, is $150 to $200 for the clutch spring, or clutch uh, sensor. So, I'm going to show you where they are, and kind of tell you how to fix them. It's really simple. The sensor took me, I think, 5 to 10 minutes, if that. Hell, not even. Um... The spring took me one or two minutes. The spring's a little difficult just to because it's to get the spring in there. It's a pain, but it's easily done. So I'm gonna show you where they are and how to do them. Okay, guys. So we're on the driver's side of the truck. Got your side box, your air tank. <clears throat> so right under here, above your air tank, you can already see it. There's your clutch return spring right there. Your clutch assembly is all up through there. You got all your cabling. You got your air tank. And heck, if you really need an open position, you got three nozzles on uh, three air lines on top of the tank. I mean, they're literally the clutch springs right above it. Pretty much, I found the easiest way is to undo this side first. Um, I unhook this side and then unhook the one up in the front because the one up in the front moves. That's your clutch pedal assembly all right through here. And yes, the underside of the truck is dirty. And when I re-put the spring on, I did this side first, and I pulled it to this one here. Now my spring, I twisted it a little bit further. Um, like if you just put it on and just hook it, it's fine. It's a brand new spring. But I went a little bit, and I twisted it, you know, stock the opening of the hook. Like you can see where it's open on one end and where it goes to the spring on the other. The opening was on the, like, facing this way. I turned it to make the spring a little bit tighter and uh, pull the clutch a little bit better. So that one's pretty easy. As you can see, I'll try to get up in here. So there it's hooked on there. You can see it goes up to the pedal and back here. Now, the sensor is right up here. So you're kinda kinda, like where your fender is, your battery box, your air tank, all this area right here, the sensor is almost right up. So, I'm going to try to get you guys in here. And this is a sensor right here. This cable. It's attached to this bracket. Get my wires out of the way. Held on by two 8mm bolts. Now the other side here, this side where the bolts go through, are flathead screwdrivers. Or, you know, flat tip screwdriver bits. Um, let's see if I can get... You better try. There you go. And the spring goes up on top of the clutch, like that. All I had to do was hold my fingers against those two bolts or screws to stop them from moving. You undo the two here, the sensor falls out. The clip is right here. You just undo the clip, bolt the sensor back, the new sensor in, re clip it, re zip tie it down, you're good to go. And since I have done that, I have not had any cruise control or jake brake issues. 
Um, before I replaced the sensor, see, I did the spring and it didn't do anything. So I had to replace the sensor. Now that I've replaced the sensor, I've had no issues. My cruise control works every single time. It doesn't turn off. Um, my uh, jake brake works all the time now. It doesn't kick off like it used to. It works perfectly. So I spent about 200 bucks on both parts because I got the sensor a little bit cheaper. Um, was looking around at dealerships because each dealership charges different for the part. Um, so they have to search around for the part. You can get them on Amazon or eBay for like 180 bucks. But 200 bucks fixed everything. Everything works good now. So I hope this helps you guys. Um, I don't have the part numbers. Um, I'll try to put the part numbers in the description below. I gotta look them up online. I'll try to put the part part numbers below. And uh, hope this helps you guys. If you guys are having clutch or uh, cruise control issues or jake brake issues um, with them kicking off while you're driving down the road just randomly. So if you are having that issue, these are the first two things you should look at. Easiest things to replace. After that, you're looking at crew at your control or your clutch stuff, you know. So hopefully this helps, guys. Y'all have a good day. Be safe out there. Catch you later.